Hey everybody! Today I'm going to teach you how to use these adorable dies to create a little living room scene with a shadow. So I'm starting with just a slightly smaller than A2 panel of cardstock that I am going to be just barely ink blending all over with this beautiful pale blue. I want to create an entire blue room with blue wallpaper and blue carpet. So I'm doing that with the help of some post-it tape. And here what I'm doing is creating the bottom of the walls where they meet the floor and creating that little angle. And then I'll do a vertical in just a minute to create the corner. But first of all, I'm going to put this awesome layering stencil down to create my fancy striped wallpaper. Now here I'm not even changing the ink color. I'm just applying a little bit more ink. So there won't be any white space showing on this card because that pale layer of blue that I put down all over will be kind of the neutral. And then when I go in with a little bit of a heavier hand with this ink to create the stripes, it will all be very harmonious because it's actually the same ink pad, but I'll still get quite a bit of contrast. So you can see those delightful little stripes there. So now this stencil layers in a bunch of different ways. I'm using it to center the stripes that I already have down underneath the positive part of this stencil, leaving the little skinny stripes to go in between each of the thicker stripes. So I'll, again, I'll just apply a little bit more ink to create these stripes. And I'm actually going to go over this several times to make these a little bit darker. And this is a nice sturdy stencil, so I don't really even have to worry about it moving. I didn't put pixie spray on the back. I'm not using it on my sticky mat and it still creates beautiful stripes, but you can certainly use either one of those methods to hold your stencil down if you want to. So when I pull it up, you can see this beautiful sort of peppermint style stripe that you get by layering those two pieces. Now, right where the corner meets, I'm going to put a vertical and that's going to let me add just a little bit of shading up and down and on each side to create the illusion of a corner in this little imaginary room. This is an easy trick that I do all the time. I have so many cards with this trick because it's just so inviting to have a corner in your cards. So, and it's fun to add wallpaper. A lot of times I'll just leave it plain, but it's really fun to add wallpaper with this striped stencil. This little bit of shading really creates the illusion of a room, as you can see. It really makes it look like there is a wall there in a corner. So now I'll put the tape back on the other side to create a little bit of shadow on the left side of my scene. Same way, I'm doing the exact same process. I'm just adding shading to that left faux wall that I've created. This will enhance the idea that there is a corner in my scene. It's so easy and it's one ink pad. So you have to try this. You have to promise me in the comments that you're going to try this because it's so easy and fun. So now I'll do the big reveal, which is always so fun. And you can see that it really looks like you're inside a little room with a corner in it. So I will remask the bottom of the walls and add a little bit of shading to the floor. Not much, but you can make it even more dramatic and darker with darker ink. On this one, I'm going to keep it pretty subtle because my focal point is that adorable little kitty. But you can see even that little step adds a lot. So I'll just get the excess ink off on the carpeting, the faux carpeting. And I will begin to ink blend the pieces of this adorable little die with the animal planters. I'm using the kitty. And I wanted to show you that you can kind of mix and match the faces. So I'm actually going to use a different nose and mouth for the kitty than the one that is shown on the packaging. I'm going to use just kind of a rounder nose. And I'm creating like a tabby like an orange tabby cat 
which everyone knows those are the sweetest cats. And so I'm adding a little bit of candied yam around the edge just for shading. It's very subtle, but I think it makes a big difference. And then some kind of more full strength candied yam for the little stripes that I'm going to be putting on top of the kitty's head. Classic tabby pattern with the three little triangles. Very cute. So now I will do a combination of ink blending and coloring for the rest of the elements. So for the eyes, it's just easier to color them with a marker. I'm also going to color the nose with the marker. And then everything else, I will ink blend the rest. So for the little planter, I am starting with limelight. I love this color. This is my favorite color. I make no apologies for that. It's such a really pretty, fresh, springy green. So I'll first ink blend with that, and then I'm going to come back with jalapeno popper and a little bit smaller brush. And I'm going to add some shading to the stems and right where the stems meet the leaves. This does two things. It makes the leaves look much brighter. You're sort of focusing on the leaves because they're a little bit lighter. But it also adds a little bit of dimension, kind of pushes those stems back visually and brings the leaves forward, which is a cute look. It's also doing a third little trick, which is serving as a complementary color for my warm yellowish orangish tabby cat. And complementary colors are always great. The background is also a complementary color for the little kitty focal point. So now I'm taking pop and pink. And I'm getting most of the ink off to color the ears and the little mouth of the kitty. I just want that to be a real pale pink. Oops, I almost lost an ear. I found it. Now the little tab at the bottom of these plants is so that you can glue the plants behind the planters. So it kind of gives you a little firmer foundation to work on. And that's so cute. Don't you wish you had this vase now? Because I do. I really wish I had a little kitty planter. Isn't that sweet? Look at that little round eye. So I'm putting the glue directly on the kitty face and then just picking up the smaller pieces and adding them to the little glue dots. So I will add the glue for the little head stripies in just a second after I finish these. These are very tiny dots of glue, so I don't want them to dry. <laughs> too much while I'm putting the rest of this little kitty together. Is this not the cutest thing you've ever seen? It's so cute, but we're not done. Because I have a really fun step that's going to really make this little kitty planter extra special on this card. So I added the dots of glue. For the stripes, there is one that is slightly longer. That's the one you'll want to put in the middle and then put the other two on the sides. And you can see how adding that darker bit of orange really gives you a good little contrast there. So adorable. Look how cute he is. He's so cute. I might end up putting white gel pen on there at the end. There are also some little flowers if you want to intersperse those in the trees. So now I'm just going to kind of figure out where I want my kitty. I think I want it over here on the right because I don't want to obscure that corner that I took the time to create. So what I'll do is I'll hold him in place where I want him. And then I'm just going to take the negative space that I created when I die cut this. And I'm going to slip it behind the vase slightly offset. I'll do the same with the kitty face. But right now I'm just going to create a shadow using the negative space of the dies behind where I'm going to put the little vase. This is such a fun and easy trick just to use your dies as shadow creators that I use this all the time. It's very fun and easy. So I'll be creating the shadows with cement gray and I'm just going to go in kind of hold the little loose pieces of paper down as I'm doing this. You can see I kind of have my finger on the little areas that protrude down that aren't really connected to anything just so that they don't accidentally lift up while I'm ink blending and I don't get ink underneath them. I want it to be a pretty crisp little shadow. You could also put a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back of this if you like, but I'm just living on the edge out here, just yellowing it up and holding it down with my finger, which works just fine. 
So once you have enough ink on there that you like the shadow, you can definitely make very dark, dramatic shadows. This one's going to be kind of a medium toned one. You could also just do a very light one. Don't worry that that little square part is part of the shadow because that'll be covered up by the vase. So I'll hold that in place where I want it and then I will position the negative space from the vase underneath it so that those two kind of match up. And you can even see the way it's positioned. It matches up to the way that I glued it so you know that it's pretty accurate. The tape here I'm using just to protect the rest of my scene. I'm kind of a enthusiastic ink blender and so I have to you know, take precautions against myself to make sure that I don't color the entire card gray while I'm trying to create this shadow. Now the left side is a little bit darker. Again, doesn't really matter. You're not going to see it once this is all put together. But look how cute that little shadow is. Oh my gosh, it adds so much dimension to the scene. And I like having it spaced a little bit away from the shadow. So I'm actually going to add foam tape to all of the little parts and pieces, including the leaves, which I won't make you suffer through watching me cut up and put on there. And then I will just pop the vase down. I do have foam adhesive behind every leaf because I think that makes it look really even and pretty. It's all popped up. It'll go great through the mail. But I just think that's so cute and it looks so realistic with that little shadow. It's a very homey little scene. So here's the finished card. I hope you've enjoyed this.